Hi, what's up? I'm DJ Six Smith. You're watching the sit down. Time to have a few laughs. Chloe Hilliard here with us. Hey. What's going on? How are hey, you? I'm great. And yourself? I'm doing well. This is a pretty amazing book this cover is, here. Thank I you. I mean, not just the title itself, but like, <laughs> I think I just recognized that there's popcorn all over the place. Yes, here. yes. Every time you look at it, you see something different. Yes, yes that is a full, real popcorn <laughs> afro. That is a real popcorn bra. And that's a real cookie. So how so. did you get the idea <laughs> to just create this book cover before we can get into the book? So uh, basically, the, the food the food issue is pretty much thick throughout the whole mm -hmm. book. So I wanted to do something that like was fun and food related, and um, and I just thought like what was like an iconic image. And so I was just looking like old images of like Diana Ross and mm -hmm. Dorothy Dandridge, and just like saw like these big afros, a twiggy with the big like mm -hmm. eyelashes, and I thought like that would be striking. And so I just I raised it to the art director like, hey, what do you think about a popcorn <laughs> afro? Bra? He was like, I love it. Like let's roll. With and it. that was it. And it was no other like conversation. So I thought I was like, this is too wow. easy. And then I show up for the photo shoot, and there's a real popcorn afro like glued on like <laughs> kernel by kernel. And the wonderful guy who made it, uh, he was like. Like, yeah, I never want to eat popcorn again. How long did it take that guy <laughs> to make that thing? It took him like a full week. It wow. was two looks. I had this one, and on the back cover, I'm also in like a licorice wig gotcha, and bra. Gotcha. So yeah, there was a lot of like <laughs> Home Depot stops and candy stores. How long was the photo shoot? Just one day, just yeah. like about a couple hours. That's not, not that bad long. at all. Yeah, it was just me just being sexy and popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> so what was it like writing the book? Because you've had this whole career where you were a journalist, yes. you got into comedy. What was it like kind of unpacking things? Just be like, listen, screw it. Like, we have so many diets and New Year's goals. Yes. Like, let's just embrace who you are. Yes, it was really interesting. So I never knew about food or my issues with food and weight. I knew as a journalist, you know, before I got into comedy, I did journalism for over 10 years. And I was like, in order for be a journalist, you have to write, you have to write a book. This is before, like, social media, right? right. So, like, you know, anybody who's, like, on social media now who's a journalist who has, like, you know, 500,000 people, <laughs> that would be, like, a that's, book. That's a book. That's exactly. a book. So I was like, I have to write a book at some point to submit me as mm -hmm. a journalist. And then I got into comedy, and then I was approached about writing a book just based off an article I was in. And I was like, okay, well, what, what I write about now? Because, like, I'm not in the thick of journalism. I don't really know. Like, I don't really want to just, like carve myself open and make like this voyeuristic mm. diary. And so I wanted to do something that was revealing about myself but also was informational. And so I kind of combined like my issues with body image, weight and insecurity and related to like how other people deal with like food and diet. Cause I've been on, I mean, not right now, but like my first diet was when I was like probably like eight or nine years old. My mm. mom put me on a diet. So I was like, I've been dealing with this yeah. my whole life. And then the more I talked about it, the more I researched things, I realized that there's more people like me in the world who are dealing with our size or like our insecurity or like how to cut calories than there are people who are perfect. So I just wanted to write something so people could just like let themselves just off the hook and yeah. just chill and like just realize there's so many other things that play a role in like how we eat in this country especially. Yeah, absolutely. So what are some of those things that do play a role, whether it's genetics or the yeah. food itself? Like what did you learn throughout the Well, process? I mean, I learned about the food swamps and food deserts and I, you know, you know it, you just know, don't know the, the language right. for it. So basically it's like most Americans have to travel like over like one and a half miles to get to a, an actual supermarket. And so that means you live in a food desert and that's like all over the country. That's yeah. not just like low income. This is like middle America as well and so when you have a food desert then you have like fast food companies who seize the opportunity and they just fill it with all of these like easy food chains and that's called a food swamp and so when you're in those environments like what's accessible to you is something that's five dollars on a menu not an organic anything that you know comes with a credit check yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Because, like, just affording good food is not easy. It doesn't yeah. matter where you are in the country. And then also, like, if you had a busy life, you got kids or whatever, you just need to stop somewhere real quick. Like, fast food makes a lot of sense. Yes. So it's, it really makes a lot of sense why this has been such a big part of our mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. And you think about that, it's like so easy to tell somebody who you feel is, like, overweight, like, well, just get up, exercise, and eat right. And it's just like, you don't even have the access to the foods. Like, even in New York City, we didn't get, like, real supermarkets mm -hmm. until, unfortunately, gentrification came in again it's trying to tell you like well, what is that saying about how you value me that you didn't think that we were worth an actual organic food store until people who could pay more rent came in so yeah, it's just it's like ridiculous. it's a lot of there's things a lot that, of different issues a lot, a lot of different, different things yeah but it's also funny so I don't want people thinking it's no, like there's a lot of humor I'm funny Trust yes. me. <laughs> so what's it like using the humor to tackle a difficult topic like this because yeah. you mentioned it, it's been since eight or nine years old I'm sure there have been dis difficult points in, in the Absolutely. whole journey. But what's it like to kind of laugh about things and also put it under that humor spot? Because I think you, I have to just laugh at the absurdity of the things that I went through because I just didn't have the information.
information. And it wasn't just me, it was my parents, it was my community. And you know, even as a kid growing up, I remember my grandmother was like, you have to eat everything on your plate. Mm -hmm. If I, I work too hard, I sleep too hard in the kitchen, you're gonna need every last bite. And at the time, I'm just like, oh, I don't wanna eat this food. And then she would say, like everybody in the 80s said, like, you know, there's starving kids in Africa. Yep, and you're just I, like, <laughs> what? Like, on, I, now on. I got a guilt trip. I don't yeah. even know where Africa is. I'm five. <laughs> and I got to eat all my food. And just like, it, that, it's like, that is just like a mind, you know, like a mind twister. And you're kind of like, well, what am I gonna, how am I supposed to handle this? I'm five years old. And then also now thinking back, it's like she was just doing the best she could sure. because she comes from a hard working class family and you don't waste food. And so I have to eat the food. And so she was doing what she felt was the best thing to happen. But then also she was teaching me to overeat. Mm -hmm. And so now it's just like I'm forcing myself to eat more food and then you just, your stomach expands and you eat more food and that's your new normal. So it's just like a domino effect. And you know, my grandmother's great. She's still alive, so hey, Nana. <laughs> um, so I know she did it with love. So this like, those are the types of things where you can look back and be like, they didn't know any better. Right.